Alright everyone, uh, let's do a little bit of another review time. Uh, as yeah, last week, the last 50 cards of the expansion have been revealed of the Boomstay Project. We now got a very good view on what the expansion is about. And I want to take a little bit of a look into all the last 50 cards that have been revealed. And afterwards do myself a little bit of a class prediction before uh, the expansion starts. First one up here is the Galvanizer, 2 mana, 1, 2 mech, reduce the cost of mechs in your hand by 1. So I think this is one of the strong new mechs revealed. In the last 50 cards there have been a lot of mechs revealed that seem quite powerful in a way that it might make a mech deck work. There was one thing that I always had with all the mechs that got revealed is there are just not enough mechs yet. But some mechs are getting in now and this is a very interesting one. Because it reduces the cost of the mechs in your hand by one, it kind of uh, comes back to the mech warper that we had back in the day, uh, in the in the good old uh, mech expansion we had before. What was a very powerful card. This one maybe not as powerful as the mech warper, but still a very promising mech uh, to make like a more aggressive mech deck seem to work. Not sure if there is enough so, uh, support yet, as a lot of the mechs are more uh, stacking towards like a strong magnetic mechanic. But maybe it can get there. It's an okay card. It's a neutral card, so it can get played in every class. It has some. Um, it has some potential to maybe see work in a more uh, some kind of aggressive or maybe combo mech deck. The Stormbringer is the Shaman legendary spell. So every class getting their one legendary spell, and for the Shaman it is the Stormbringer. I think uh, the Stormbringer is. The first shot or the first legendary spell that I have not really a good idea yet from if it will see any play because I I'm kind of like this might be the 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 weakest uh, spell being revealed. Seven mana transform your minions into random legendary minions. So when I saw this card, I was thinking a little bit of Rotface. Rotface has the mechanic of summoning random legendary minions, and because I play a lot of Rotface. It kind of gives me a little bit of a view on um, how powerful a random legendary is. Like the random legendaries, they can be very powerful with a lot of stat lines if you get an expensive one. But there are a lot of also weaker random legendaries to get. And I think the average range is around like getting a 4-4-5-5. Four, four, five, five, something around that. And this one says transform your minions into random legendary minions. So... You have to see it as a mega mega rot face where if you have a lot of tokens, totems or anything like that, summon them into random legendary minions. It's definitely a card that is like as powerful uh, as like a mega evolved power play and it is definitely having a power level. But if I compare it to some other legendary spells I'm like not sure if this can see any play because it's it can be a very strong swing turn but it's 7 mana. And 7 mana is very expensive and with the inconsistency of what you get, I'm not sure if this is going to see much play. It's a very, I hope it will see play, it can be cool, but with the inconsistency of it, how good it can be, it might be very, very hard uh, to pay 7 mana for this card because it can also go very wrong for 7 mana. We'll see, a little worried it's a bit too situational. Prismatic Lens. This is a card that I am very excited for. 4 mana card, uh, Pelding cards. Draw a minion and a spell from your deck. Swap their cost. What is the awesome thing about this Prismatic Lens is... Um, you can make some very funny combos in your Pelding deck. Where you either go on a very expensive minions and cheap spells. Or, or very cheap uh, spells and very expensive minions. So, for example, if you put yourself, um, like, a sp only spells in, in your deck that are, like, one or two mana, but then you suddenly put in, like, your Tyrantus, your Deathwing, and all expensive minions, and you suddenly swept their cost, well, you see what can happen, right? So, already the card is kind of decent as, like, a four mana draw two. What well, is not insane, but it's kind of decent, but the... The cheapness of this card, where you can make like very combo-oriented uh, plays in the deck, I think can be um, uh, very, very powerful to make like combos possible. And you don't have to go for just that, but 
if you play like uh, Lich Kings in this deck or any card that uh, that is like on the expensive side, because Paladin is currently not playing a lot of spells, so maybe you can justify to just play one mana spells in your deck and play yourself only uh, minions that are costing four or more. So every time you play this card, you're gonna get a minion that suddenly becomes just one mana. And that can be like, I think a very powerful turn if you just get yourself uh, very cheap minions. I don't think you can do it the other way around because then you have to uh, run a spell paladin. And I don't know how an expensive spell paladin will look like. You only can play dino size and maybe spiker steed, but then it's already kind of done. <laughs> Won't be funny to make like a dino size. And uh, play only one mana minions. Maybe you can make an aggro paladin deck where you just play like only cheap minions and you play dino size like a spiteful paladin. And then you play this and then you have a one mana, you have one mana summon a 10 10. I don't know. <laughs> it's a, I'm very excited about this card with all the potential of the combo. It's not just a four mana draw two. No, it's a, it has way more potential than that. So a very cool card. And next up is Subject 9, one of the neutral legendaries of the set. Subject 9, 5 mana 4-4, four, four. draw 5 different secrets from your deck. Wow, wow what a card guys, draw 5 random, that's a lot of extra draw you can get there. So how can we, can we make this... Uh, can we make this card work to not uh, let it become a subject 9? It kind of has a little bit of like the way that Mistress Challenger works, but the problem is this just draws it and doesn't put them on the deck. I think it's very hard to make this card work. The card can be very good if there will be a card in the game where you can play the secrets for uh, zero mana or something like that. We had like the Clockwork Hunters before that makes uh, every secret cost zero in your hand. So if things like that are becoming in the game, the only thing that is kind of close to it now, if I'm correct, is Kirim Torn Mage, that like the next secret you play is zero mana. So it's very, very hard to make this card any work at the moment. I don't feel this card is having a, g a very good potential. It's a very expensive card. There is not much benefit in drawing like so many secrets if you cannot play them. So I think it's very hard to make this card work at the moment. Um, but if there will any card come out where you can like cheat on uh, the cost of the playing secrets on the board, then this card might become a thing because then it can be a very promising card in either Hunter or Mage. Currently, I don't really see this getting much played. And I will be say, guys, there are some very powerful legendaries in this expansion. So you really... This is your. This is the legendary you don't want to hit um, when you're opening your packs, because this feels like a more of a 400 dust compared to some other legendaries. You're gonna be like, no, not the subject nine. <laughs> Next up is a, a Dino Medic, five mana, three four mech for the warrior. Another mech card for the warrior, guys. A lot of mech cards have been revealed here. For the warrior, uh, deal five damage randomly split along all minions expect except max. So basically, a five mana three four deal five damage randomly. All minions um, deal five damage randomly. So also deal five damage on your board of the side. It's not just focused on enemy minions. Very important to notice. Uh, 5 mana 3 4 is the card is kind of stat wise worth 3 mana and then you pay 2 mana for the effect and for the mech um, it being a mech maybe it is a little bit of a promising card as I can I, this is not like 2 mana deal 5 damage randomly can be a pr pretty solid if you can like also combine it with some mech synergy but this is really a card like if the if the mechanic of the mech will be powerful in warrior this card will probably see play but if that's not the case then it will probably see no play at all so this is a card you want to play in like a dr boom deck it's a card that kind of fits the warrior quite well because the warrior falls a bit behind and then cards like this can be very powerful and if you just play other mechs with it then it doesn't damage your board and it's just um summoning your opponent's board 
This card can be also very good with like uh, the Gunspire Warrior, guys. Play your Gunspire Warrior, play this, and then you deal 5 damage on your Gunspire. I can see that being a cool combo deck. So, because it's um, it's like a warrior card, I still see quite some potential, as the random split can also be sometimes pr profitable with Rod Phase, with Turret, with all these cards on your side. But I'm not sure if we ever gonna get like some kind of meta there. Um, it is a, it is, it has potential, and I think it will see play in like a Doctor Boom Warrior. Um, we'll see how powerful that is. Very hard for me to rate that deck yet, as there are so many cards that can be a thing in that deck. We really have to see how that works out. Next up, Bronze Spire Gatekeeper, three mana, one five, Mech Magnetic Taunt. Uh, I start to feel bad. I still start to feel feel more and more bad for. Uh, for the Patriot guys, the the always power creeped card here. Now we have the three mana one five bronze uh, gatekeeper. It's one of the very cheaper magnetic cards, so very promising uh, in that way. There is a card that is like a little bit more promising in the way of it being like we already have a two mana one five mech uh, being revealed, but it's like a little cheaper than this. So this card brings you the taunt and brings you also the magnetic mechanic itself, and it's kind of a powerful card because the stat line on the card is very good. It's uh, if you want to have magnetic, if you want to have the magnetic mechanic work, you want a stat line of a very healthy stat line, and not not so many attack is fine. So I can see this card being very well. Maybe it's very nice to have a magnetic mechanic in an aggressive meta that also has like the taunt mechanic. So yeah, I see. Uh, I I can see this card kind of work in a way. It will. It's also very promising as it is a uh, neutral card, so that makes it pretty good. Um, hard very to make work yet. Like uh, I think the one mana and two mana mech cards are more defining and gonna make it more powerful. But this has like magnetic on it itself too. So it's one of the cards that can bring you the magnetic mechanic. And maybe you can just get it played as a one-off uh, in some of the mech decks to just have enough magnetic itself. I can see it. Aw, oh, look at this card, guys. The Skater Bot. A 1 mana, 1 1 mech rush. With also the magnetic mechanic. So, kind of cool as it has like the rush on itself um, and as a magnetic combined. This is obvious not a mech that is very powerful in the magnetic part of like the stat line of this card because it doesn't really add much. So this is like a card if you really need to have like another magnetic card and preferable a very cheap magnetic card. This can work and this card can work with very strong stat line mechs um, to give them rush. So if you give like uh, if you combine it or if you combine it with the one man or with the two mana one five neutral mech. Uh, you suddenly gain a 3 mana uh, 2 6 with rush. Well, this kind of pretty, getting pretty good. So, if you need a cheap magnetic card to make your the more consistent magnetic cards work, then this card can see a little play. Otherwise, it's probably a little weak to see play and it will not get there. I would rate it 2 out of 5, something like that. Next up is the Floops Gorius Gloop. One mana Druid spell. Whenever a minion dies this turn, gain one mana crystal this turn only. When I saw this card, guys, I was like, wow, that is an innervate on stereotes. Or how do you say it? On stereotes. This is a very promising card, guys. A very promising card. I think this is one of the, and maybe the best, uh, best spell stone uh, revealed. Very powerful card. It's like an innovate that is just going complete crazy. So, one mana, guys. Imagine, play this card, or you just swipe your opponent's board, or you play a play board, you trade everything in, and then you suddenly gain a one mana, gain like five or six mana crystals. Like, this card is insane. This card is so powerful. 
Uh, also works very well probably in like a Meligos uh, Druid deck where if you make a big clear uh, clear happen and then you play this or you are like 7 mana and suddenly you clear a little bit and then you just innovate yourself into like a UI turn. Super powerful card. I think this card is pretty busted um, in Druid. So I think this card will see play in a lot of Druid decks. And I think, I mean, Druid is already getting a lot in this expansion. Druid is already very powerful in this expansion. And this is another Druid card, guys, that I I think you're just going to see play. It's so strong, in my opinion. I, I This will be a card that I will rate as a uh, top 5 of the expansion or top 10 of the expansion. So I see this as a very, very powerful card. And I definitely think you're going to see this played. And this card will, uh, yeah, this will make Druid uh, probably even better, guys. Getting some extra good Druid cards in the expansion. Not bad, not bad. But uh, I, I will rate this card as an, uh, a very high contender. And I think you're going to see it play in multiple Druid cards, uh, Druid decks. It's one mana and the potential of getting so mana on getting like a completely innervate that can just go out of control so early so fast with so many mana cheating ways we know how we know how powerful mana cheating is currently and this is another card that can do that so i think this card is uh, very good next up copetel imposter four mana four four a battle cry gain stealth gain stealth until your next turn very interesting card as it is a mech so you can combine this with another magnetic card and so you also can gain stealth on the magnetic card to maybe make like a more combo way work. Stand line of this card is pretty good. 4 mana 4-4. Four, four. So this is a very promising card in the way of stat line and possible potential. There's also another potential with like Shadowbox Shaman with this card a bit in my opinion. Because you can all you can make your Shadowbox all have stealth. And maybe you think that's not very promising because you kind of want to get him back on the board. But this is a card that if your Grumble misses and you have like everything on the stealth, you suddenly can just maybe kill your opponent or it can be like very promising to just play before you have played your Shadowwalk against Aggro decks. When you just played your Chain Ganks and you just summon a very strong stat line. So I even think in that kind of... They, uh, kind of, like I think this is a card that people will actually show play in Shadowbox Shaman maybe to make it even a little bit better but maybe also with like other mechs this can be a card to see play and it has quite some potential I think to to see play there we'll see how much play um, but I mainly also see it as a mech card that can like if there are uh, other mech cards you want to combine with very strong stat line and you really don't want to get killed to get like one extra turn. Works very well with like Zilliax maybe for example to like set that one up to gain a very strong lifesteal turn. Uh, definitely think it is a mech with like potential if there is like enough mechs to make. Uh, we really have to see how powerful the mechs are. Uh, that definitely will require some testing but I definitely think we will see some mech decks getting there. Tending Tauren, 6 mana, 3, 4, choose 1, give your uh, other minions plus 1, plus 1, so give them power of the wild, or summon 2, 2, 2, trance, so in Dr. Tauren. Dr. Tauren is 6 mana, 3, 4, summon 2, 3, 2, trance, is not very powerful, um, it's quite expensive for 6 mana, and not very flexible, so it's like a 6 mana, 7, 8 in a way, but that's not very insane. Uh, and give your other minions plus one plus one is a very expensive power of the wild So I'm not very convinced this card is gonna see much play Maybe a trend a druid can get off and then then this card is kind of a little bit of a thing But I don't really rate this card high at the moment. I think this is a, a Druid card that has like not Really hitting the mark compared to other druid cards revealed I would probably give it 2-5, that there is some potential in the trend synergy, but I don't really feel, um, it's kind of like a baby Scenarius, and Scenarius is, it gets a little bit of play in token Root, so maybe in like a token Root this is like, can see play, but I just think this card is too expensive to like, justify a baby Scenarius, you just want to play Power of the Wild for the plus one effect, and 
it's a little bit flexible so maybe you can put it in like as a one-off in like an a token route but i think there are just better cards to play in that spot mechano egg five mana zero five mech death rattle summon an eight eight robosaur so another egg revealed here and we kind of know after this expansion how powerful the egg can be we of course have mainly seen it in in like hunter that is like very broken synergies in that way but i think one thing is that we have learned never uh, underestimate eggs there are always in uh, every expansion egg decks kind of coming out because of the powerfulness of getting this swing turn over two turns uh, that you can make of course cards like this are very weak to silence and removal so it's like a little bit of a problem especially this one because it's a five mana one but there is some cool potential with this card because if you if you kind of eat this with like any kind of mech or if you buff this and you combine it with like a zilliax and the 8 8 also if i'm correct being a mech itself um can make it very powerful because you can suddenly gain an insane rush lifesteal card that is just gonna like lifesteal directly like for 10. I think this is a very strong card also just for Paladin. I would rate this card pretty high. I would rate it... Oh, am I gonna rate it high? You guys gonna pay me back on this guys if I would rate it 4 out of 5, right? Can it be having that potential? Because I think this card is pretty good. I think this card has quite a lot of potential. I kind of want to rate it 4 out of 5 to show some balls, but I'm a little worried that it's just not hitting there because of Paladin. Because Paladin feels a little weak. Uh, I will rate it 4 out of 5. I think this card is good. If it doesn't see play, it's because of um, just not Paladin just not getting there with the X. But I think this card, like, X are very powerful. And this card is very powerful so if it doesn't see play it's just because Peldin doesn't really get there the problem with this card is a little bit for Peldin it doesn't have like the play that for one mana you can cube it it's already very powerful you can steal it it's it will always be a little weak to single removal so that will be a big problem but maybe if you just play it and you play like uh, other mechs that can eat this card it can be very very strong um if you play like one mana or two mana magnetic cards on this guys, it's very powerful. So I can see this card getting played. It's a hard card to review. If it was not a Pelding card but any other class card, I will it will be so good. So here is a good example, guys, on a very broken mech. I was when this card was revealed, I was like what that's a very powerful card what do we have here the glowtron a one mana one tree uh so having the stat line of a one mana one tree is an uh, a stat line that over the hearthstone years have has always been very powerful we know it from cards like mana worm and cleric uh we have also had like other cards that have been revealed during the time we now also have a one mana mech for the warrior uh being revealed with the stat line but the Glotron, I feel, is even another, is even a stronger one, as it has Magnetic itself. So, a 1 mana, 1 tree Magnetic, Mech, Glotron, just for the Paladin. Diamond stat line on a Mech, and I think this is what the Mech decks kind of need to, like, make a more aggressive Mech deck work. I was waiting for, like, 1 mana, 2 mana mix to, to kind of come out. Uh, to make this mech archetype a very much a thing. And this last stat line guy is very strong. It also has the flexibility on playing other cheap mechs. Play like 2 mana uh, or 3 mana mechs that are just very strong. Magneting them with the Glowtron. And you're getting a very strong stat line very early in the game. So there is a lot of potential for this card to make a more aggressive mech deck work. And this card is sick. This card is sick. If this card doesn't see play, it is just not getting there uh, because the, the mechs are just not strong enough. But this card is probably the strongest early game mech revealed. And it has... I will trade this card 5-5. I think this is one of the 
the top contenders of the expansion and this card is a card that makes uh, is gonna make like the can really carry the aggressive mech decks work and as it also has magnetic itself it's a very very powerful card and you will see this card played a lot and yes guys you can clip it because I rated it 5 out of 5 <laughs> Feel clip incoming in two months, I know guys. But I'm here to make some ballsy ballsy picks, okay? Up next is a two mana warrior card, weapons project. Each player equips a two three weapon and gains six armor. So very a uh, very cool warrior card here revealed. Each player with equipping a two three uh, weapon for each player, you're mo you're probably gonna be like, hey, what does this even do, man? Like, why do I wanna equip a weapon? Well, the cool thing what you can also do with this weapon or with this card is it kind of works as an Harrison or an Ooze. It works as a two mana spell of maybe putting a weapon of your opponent away for a two three weapon. You get yourself a two three weapon and you gain six armor. So it's a kind of a cool card. Um, I'm not sure if it's like powerful enough to see enough play, but I could really like the I really like the the way of this card working as it can work as a flexible card. And flexible cards are very good in uh, in Warrior. So making this as a card of you not having to justify your ooze or Harrison and you can just play the weapons project, gaining a little bit of armor with the card together and two mana six armor is quite a lot. Like it. It's not as good as Bring It On, but it kind of gets there. So you have four less armor compared to Bring It On. Um, and for the flexibility in a weapon heavy meta and you don't, and you can play this, I can see it being a pretty reasonable card. Of course the 2-3 weapon is not very helpful and yeah, you give your opponent a little bit of damage. So that might not be... It might not be good enough to just justify on itself, but once there are a lot of weapons around, hey, why do we not just uh, do this and uh, give each player a two-tray weapon? So I can see it in an, I can see it in some metas being a good card. Maybe you can even play this and then just play Harrison with it. I can see it uh, working as like a seven meta combo of, hey, I give you this weapon and then I draw three cards, <laughs> or something like that. Maybe it can work. We'll see. Uh, very cool card. It's kind of having the blink thrown a little bit of interaction, so I can see it uh, getting some play, but it's more of a tech card. What rated three five? Two mana spirit bomb spell for the warlock. Deal from damage to a minion and your hero. So two. It's kind of two mana soul fire and deal four damage to your hero. Um, uh, I kind of like this card because it, it's kind of un unshadow bolt for one less mana and you pay a little life for that. Ooh, uh, but it's kind of losing four lives. So if you play this in like a more control, what you play this in even Warlock? So I'm kind of thinking if this gets like a play in like current even Warlock's list. It's one of the activators for like Spellstone, but for the besides that there is not much other cards that you really benefit from. I think it might be cool to play this as an, uh, a one-off maybe. Two mana deal four is a very nice number. Uh, there are a lot of uh, minions that have four health, so I can see it working decent on them. It has some good combinations with cards like Hooked Reaver to like get earlier in the play. As one of the problems often with Hooked Reaver is like you're at twenty lives and you just don't get it in. So it has also some synergy with that. You can kind of play a little bit more with your lives but it's not like a suicide card where you suddenly go solo that you're like what did i just do i think this card is good um i think this card is good i think warlock in the current state has enough heal also 
and the current meta. I think Varlock has enough heal to kind of justify this card at the moment. One big problem for Varlock like one year ago was you would never play cards like this because you could never lifesteal enough afterwards. But now you kind of can with Spellstone, plays on Brewers and cards like that. Maybe it's a card you can also justify a bit in Zoo, but I think you don't really want to play spells too much in Zoo. I, I still don't see the reason why you want to damage yourself or... I mean, two mana, two, ma two mana deal for damage is good, but you can also just play Soul Fire in a Zoo. Don't really see the point, maybe. Um, but this is a good card, guys. It's um, cards that are like doing a lot uh, for just a very cheap cost and having a little bit of backfire. I feel this backfire is justifying, so I will rate it 4 or 5. Guys, I'm making some bold, uh, some bold predictions, don't I? I feel a lot of uh, clips are incoming later on this, but uh, I will rate this card very high. I think it's a good card. Crystallizer, 1 mana, 1 tree, battle cry, deal 5 damage to your hero, gain 5 armor. So, very, very solid st uh, stat line already on this card. Like, it's a 1 mana, 1 tree, well, this is one of the most powerful stat lines you can get for a 1 drop. Battle cry, deal 5 damage to your hero. Gain 5 armor. So it's... It's a card that kind of wants to play a little bit with it, with li like your life total and cheat on that and gain armor. So there is like a little benefit on... Um, on that. The problem is a little bit with this card is like there are not many control decks that want to play 1 drops. Like you can play this in your warrior maybe to think like hey armor is a thing. But how does it really help you in that. Is this a card you would like to play in your heal lock because of dealing damage to that? You can play it in Druid and stack your Spellstone. Maybe in like a token Druid. <sighs> Not sure if you're getting there. Like the stat line on this card is very good and that's why I'm like considering like hey is this card actually good? There, there should be some combos where this is maybe maybe where you can cheat with this of like Deal five damage to your hand, uh, to your hero. Gain five armor. The problem is just like in a lot of control decks, you you just don't play one drops. You just don't play one drops. Can set up like a little bit better of an Alex defensive. Like maybe it's Schultzy play in like Warrior or Warlock, but I don't know if you will ever play one drops in these decks. Because it's just a card that you are like so often is going to be so dead. So it has to be a card that is going to be more popular in like an aggro deck. And you just want to play it instead of your Diamol. And you have like maybe... Like this card shall be getting played over Diamol in a heal, heal Zoo deck maybe or something like that. But I'm not sure why. Maybe in like some kind of token druid where you also can stack your Spellstone. I can see it some play, but then you cannot play cards like Oaken Summons anymore. I don't see it getting played yet, but it has potential. So I, I will never rate this card away. It's probably an... I mean, it's probably more than a 3-5 because of like the strong stat line of this. But I just don't see the combo. It's, go it's going to be a card that is going to see play. So it's definitely in 3.5, maybe 4 out of 5. Because it will see play. I just don't see the broken uh, brokenness of it yet. Maybe Priest can do some brokenness with it too. We'll see. It's going to be a card that you will see play. That's for sure. Nether Soul Buster. 3 mana, 1, 5 demon. Gain plus 1 attack for each damage you hero has taken this turn. So, 3 mana, 1, 5 demon. Pretty solid stat line for a demon if you can attack, can, uh, can, can buff the attack fast. But, for each damage you have taken. Hmm. 
Does it work with tapping? If you play this at turn 5 and you play, uh, you tap, and that is it then a 3 mana 3-5? Three you can play this with a new spell stone that is 2 mana, and then it becomes already a 3 mana 6-5 of this. Kind of strong. Is this actually a card that is just insane with Crystallizer, the card we just revealed? Or we just take a look at, guys? If you play Crystallizer, and then you play this, do you then just have a 3 mana 6-5 there? <laughs> this is actually a card that's very good with Crystallizer, guys. <gasps> did we just, did we just like, got a busted combo here revealed, guys? 3 mana 6-5. Damn. Did we just discover one of the broken combos, guys? I think that is a very promising... This uh, this this combo, we'll probably see playing like an Heal Zoo or Demon Zoo. Tempo Zoo, whatever you want to call it. Um, I can see that getting played because the Crystallizer is already a card that is kind of okay to good in Zoo. And if you combine it with this card that is... Probably also helping already a little bit with other cards. You can play maybe the, the spell. Maybe you want to play the Humungulus. Cards like that that can... Maybe Flame Imp. Like, this card is so good, but Flame Imp too, guys. Now think about it. You, you get a 3 mana 4 5. You play that man in a zoo. This card is good. This card is very good. Now I think about it more. This card is very good. Oh my god, guys. Am I, am I too high for this expansion? Because I definitely think this is an 4.5 out of 5 card. 3 mana 4 5 is busted in Zoo, guys. This card is so good. I, I'm a little scared of rating it 5 5, but I would rate it 4.5 out of 5. I would rate it like being very strong. It uh, has so much combo potential. This card is very good. This card is very good, like, you have so many ways that you can make it 3 mana 6, 5, 3 mana 4, 5. It reminds me on, what was this card? The Console Man for Zoo. Console Man was a very strong card in Zoo, but the problem with Console Man sometimes was it was a 3 mana 1, 5 at the start. This card just gets already, like, on such a strong stat line in so many ways. I think this card is very good. And you will see it a lot of play. And it's a demon. Soul Infusion. One mana, give the leftmost minion in your hand plus two plus two. One mana plus two plus two is a pretty, pretty strong card in a way. 1 mana plus 2 plus 2. Turn 1, Soul Infusion, Coin Flame Imp. 1 mana 4, 5, 4. Let's go. It's not a card that I can see like a hand buff Warlock Burk in. I mean, 1 mana plus 2 plus 2 is pretty good. You have a lot of 2, ma you have a lot of two mana plus 2 plus 2 cards that draw a card uh, that we had or that are still getting a little played. We have it now for the Elemental Shaman. We had it for Druid. I don't think Hand Buff Warlock is a thing, but this in but I can see this in a zoo being good. And there are some busted combos you can do. We have seen the 3 mana uh, Demon being revealed. That is very good if you can... Uh, buff it because you get two copies we have chain gang for example that kind of works with this as a little bit of a broken but also itself it's already kind of decent if you just hit it on a one or a two drop so i can see it getting played in zoo i think it's a pretty good card play it also with kalisad let's go yeah i can see this card getting played it's not busted but it's pretty good actually Wow, I can see in that, and I think Zoo is going to be very good this expansion, guys. I see a lot of combo cards for Zoo possible. It's probably like 3-5 this card. I will rate it 3 out of 5. Maybe I shall, and it can also work with X. Maybe, ah, that's maybe too much. But I will definitely rate it 3-5. I'm even, uh, I even want to ma maybe rate it even higher than that. Oh my god, guys, these ratings from me. 
Doubling Imp, and this was the card I'm talking about. Uh, 3 mana 2 to summon a copy of this d uh, minion. 3 mana 2 to with a summoning another 2 to is already kind of powerful, but if you combine this with Kalisut or the buff card we just saw, um, it's even better. And the synergy with this card is just very, very strong as it is a demon itself. And 3 mana summon 2 2 2s is already pretty decent. So the doubling imp is one of the demons that I've seen. I will see, I think this is a card that you should play over Chain Gang in your, um, in your Warlock deck because of the one mana more cheapness, but uh, almost as strong or like you don't pay that much for, um, for, the, for like just uh, getting the one mana less in there. It's a little bit of a chain gang or like a, a little bit of a double gangster but for two mana cheaper with one less two two so it's a it's a card that i can see getting even more played in zoo it's a very very strong card actually and with the potential of zoo i can see this card getting played even more it's a pretty solid zoo card so it has definitely potential. I'm not sure how many buff cards you play because this card definitely, uh, of course, becomes a bit, little bit better when you buff this card. It's a uh, very solid, another very solid zoo card. 3.5 out of 5, something like that. Very, very, um, very good card in like an in like a zoo deck that doesn't play like Gul'dan and all that stuff. So a more aggressive deck. Next up, a legendary guys, Harbringer Celestia, 4 mana 5, 6, stealth, after your opponent plays a minion, become a copy of it. After, you, after your opponent plays a minion, become, wait, wait what? After your opponent minions becomes a so you play, oh wait, 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 you play this, it's stealth, your, your opponent plays a 1 mana 1-1, one, one. it's a 4 mana 1-1, one, one, or... Your opponent plays a Doomsayer, your board is gone. <laughs> Am I correct on this, guys? Is that how it works? I mean, it works against combo, sure, but it has like a little bit of counter combo potential, but there are cards you can play better than a four mana stealth card that denies combos. Like, what is this for card, guys? I mean, you it's kind of a good potential if you play against a spell hunter that doesn't play minions and then it's a four mana five six i guess or against like decks that only play big minions that are kind of some decks around but come on guys what is this for the, the, there is no way that uh, that can make up for a four mana five six because four mana five six is good but it's not that busted that you wanna like give your opponent so man so much to you just wreck you with this card. It's a, it's a card that you can take in. If you call if you call put in like a card as like your sideboard to put in your deck when you have like one specific matchup, it's a card you might put in. But otherwise this card is so not worth the risk of becoming decent that you will not play this. This is an this is a one five card. That you really bless RNG that will not be your legendary that you're gonna get out of your packs. If this is gonna be your legendary in the packs, you are like, why did this happen to me? <laughs> no, this card is not good, guys. This card is not good. 1 5. Let's go. Let's move on. Explodinator, 4 mana 3 2, summon 2 uh, zero 2 goblin bombs. 4 mana 3 2 with summoning 2 goblin guns is a uh, is pretty solid. It's a uh, slight Dr. Boom in a way with uh, f with getting quite some reasonable stat lines on. Dr. 4, guys. Dr. 4. I love how there are quite some doctors in this expansion. Um. I'm a, 
I'm not sure yet how good these goblin bombs are. I'm a little thinking how good are these goblin bombs. Um, they work all quite well with magnetic mechanics, so that's like a way it can work. It's a neutral card. I'm very happy to see like quite some neutral mechs coming out to make like a little bit more possible combos work um, in multiple decks. I'm just a little worried like how does those how much does this face damage matter in mech decks? That's like a, a bit of a thing for me. That I'm like, mech decks probably have to snowball on board. I see mech decks a little bit as like murlocs. That have to work on board and then you suddenly have so much stats on the board. That you, that you just win. And I don't really see the way that the face damage matters as much. But maybe I'm a little wrong on this. I can see a, like a more aggressive mech hunter or mech paladin work that like has that potential because that can there it really matters um, but if you combine this and you play it like with a Vargar into turn 5 I actually started to like Vargar a lot I first thought Vargar was kind of mad but maybe that's like one of the magnetic cards but if you just play like if you play the one mana Pelin magnetic card or like a hunter magnetic card or just your cheap magnetic cards, maybe it can work. So it has potential. It has potential, but it's very unhard card for me to rate. It's kind of like a 2 5 for me. But it has potential to be better. Test subject. One mana zero two, so zero attack minion. Death Rattle return any spells you cast on this minion to your hand. So you kinda play like a stone here. And then any spell you play on this stone gets back to your hand. The question is why do you then play a stone? Like it's a very hard card to play a lot on, uh, on because it's a zero. Ma it's like zero two. It's not a very strong stat line. Like yeah, you can make it work in like combo praise, but do you really want to like first play all the spells on this to then play it on anything else? There are not much cards that are very good on this. Kind of reminds me on the Paladin card, the the one mana one two. Any spell you play on this card. Um, and the spells go back to the hand. But the problem a little bit with these cards is like it's also very weak to silence. And I don't see why you want to play spells on another minion first to make it work. Like yeah, it's pretty good for combo priest maybe. Like Powerful Shield is a great card for that for example. And Priest has a little bit more potential. But cards like this are very often just not getting there. It's just an... Because it's just an... It's just a stone. It has zero attack. Like it's just there... And yeah, you can make it good, but why just not make one of them clear? Like you, like cleric is so much better than this. So I don't think this card is gonna get much played. It's not a card. Um, it's a cheap card, so maybe there is like a little bit of combos possible. But don't we just wanna go with our combos on like just minions that we already play instead of playing an a one mana zero two. I would rate it two five. It has potential with some combo priest, but it's it's not good. It's it's doing too little. Three mana, extra arms. Give a minion plus two plus two. Add a more arms to your hand that gives plus two plus two. I am not sure what the cost of more arms is. If that is also three mana two two. Or if that is like a cheaper cost. But kind of expensive 3 mana 2-2. Two, two. It's not what you want to play. It's too expensive. Um, all Even if you add another card with like more value. Sure you get a little bit of extra value. But this is very expensive. I'm not very excited for this. Uh, the, these two last cards for Priest. I don't think this is like very strong uh, 3 mana plus 2 plus 2 is just too expensive 
you prefer to play like power with shield give plus two health and give extra attack or divine spirit it never is as good as like the the card we have for priest that is like also plus two plus two but gives like a bonus effect that is much much better so these extra arms are These cards are not, this card will not make it. It's too weak, it has a little bit potential with like the Radiant Elemental becoming cheaper, but you never play the the other cards uh, for Priest that you, that are available for Priest are doing it much better. Um, this is like a 1.5 out of 5 card here. Not gonna get played much. Bump Toss. Two mana hunter card, deal two damage, summon a zero two goblin bomb. So another zero two goblin bomb here. And uh well goblin bombs are having a little bit of potential for the the hunter specifically. Yeah, uh deal it says also deal two damage. So what is the interesting thing about this card? It is also a card that you can hit face with. So it's not a card that is limited to just trading with minions. So you put, you have like a one mana more arcane shot, a little bit more expensive, but for that you get yourself a zero two goblin bomb. It's kind of a card that is a little bit all around and not like very good on one specific part. Like the deal two damage is expensive for two mana. The summon um summon a zero two is also kind of expensive. With the combination, it kind of gets there, but it's kind of what I kind of like is it's a little bit flexible. It's kind of is like a flanking strike in a way, but just a little bit less powerful, but it's a pretty okay card. Like two damage, shaman on zero two, get some potential there. It's a kind of nice spell. It's a pretty, maybe, I'm not sure if it will see play in Spell Hunter. Maybe it has like a bit potential. The problem is like, how do I activate my zero two goblin pop in Spell Hunter with not really playing minions, so yeah maybe uh with some maybe you can make like a more tempo uh or mid-range hunter that plays a little bit of a max and there this card gets some play in i can see it like the uh, hunter i was very when like flank x strike has been a very impressive card in hunter um that really was something that hunter needed Th the flexibility of deal a little damage and summon a bit on board so maybe there's a uh, baby flanking strike can get there it's a card with potential 3 out of 5, 3.5 out of 5. It has quite some potential, Hunter. Astral Rift. 2 mana, add 2 random minions to your hand. No. We're not gonna see this much played, guys. 2 mana, add 2 random minions to your hand cannot be good. Ugh, there are so many minions, Blizzard. And there are so many minions that are, like, overpriced for, like one or two mana in constructed like this is a card that probably maybe gets some play in arena but this is so bad in constructed like paying two mana to get overpriced minions is not what you want in constructed it's like on the it's like so horrible maybe it's sometimes a card that can work like from a glyph if you need value blah 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 but this is an arena card, and for arena, I would rate this card pretty high, maybe three point three point five out of five. But in constructed, I rated one out one out of five. It's a card that you are not gonna see play. There are too many minions that are just overpriced for one or two mana, and adding two random minions is very negative. Just play good minions and play arcane intellect and draw them is uh, much better. So this is not gonna get played much. It's like that you can get so many bad minions. It's also not random legendary minions or anything like that. It's a one out of five card. Sorry guys, but this one eight hitting the mark. Secret plan. One man I discover a secret. To make the secret very secret, we discover the secret. Um, interesting. 
one mana to discover a secret kind of flexible in a way that you can like pick towards your the matchup you're playing here kind of thinking if there is a card that can cheat a little bit on like the secrets but hunter doesn't really have the clockwork hunters or any like very cheating deck i'm thinking why if this card could be any good because you can play it in an odd deck and like that's one thing in which you cannot play secrets because um it doesn't work in odd but this is one of the cards you can and you can still like combine it with spellstone but it's probably like not getting there because you only discover one secret it's okay because one mana discover is okay the problem is like are the secrets good enough that you want to do this it also fits the curve well because you can play this on turn one and then you have a secret turn two so it has potential but i don't think it's powerful enough you can just rather play the secrets that you want I'm not sure if you pay like if you want to pay for the flexibility of your opponent not knowing what it is but he probably can probably still kind of figure out so i would rate it two out of five that it has um I suppose this is only Hunter Secrets, I'm not like, that's like what I suppose and that makes sense, so I would rate it like 1 out of, or like 2 out of 5, because there is like, it's an okay card, you can play it turn 1 and get a secret turn 2, uh, but I don't see it like, getting enough synergy uh, happening to make it like, very very strong at all. Next up, Necro Mechanic. Five mana, three sex, your death rattle triggers twice. Five mana, three six, your death rattle trigger twice. So this kind of reminds me of the legendary that we had before. Um, the legendary that was a four mana, your death rattle trigger twice. This card is just too slow. Uh, this card is 5 mana 3-6 with no like battle cry, no it has like, your, so you, you have to play this card and then play death rattles to trigger them twice. Very slow card, too slow to see work in uh, competitive, um, too, it's, it's gonna be too slow. I mean it has some cube synergy and stuff like this but normally when that happens you already get very strong on the board and you have you don't have the time to set up a four mana three six to to just make it work and let the minion survive and let it all go off uh it's a very weak card it's an uh, it's a card that just is too slow it's just too slow i'm not getting enough synergy working you can play so many better cards just play you can play like your play dead that is one mana to get the same effect almost and you pay four mana less for that so in any kind of combo deck you just want to play that card it's an uh, it's an overpay it's a very overpaid effect i feel two five because of like the stat line is not like horrible but just overpaid for one mana um, and maybe in some mega mega combo play that deck you can maybe get it here justified sometimes Research project two mana two mana spell for the mage Cold light oracle is back boys each player draws two cards Cold light oracle died for this huh so um Cool card, very interesting. Mill Mage can maybe make a thing then, huh? I very like this card because it is like an one of the first cards getting a little bit of this mill mechanic back. And I kind of liked Cold Light Oracle in a way because it was like a combo destroyer and worked quite well in that. Uh, Mage is like a deck that can also get very, uh, can play very well against your opponent that has a lot of cards. So has quite some potential in that. I kind of like it. Not sure how much we can make it play, but in the right metas, in the Shadowwalk and Meligos metas, guys, this is a very good card because these cards are very often, if there is an Echolite on the board, uh, already are close to overdraw. So it has like the neutralized potential on like overdrawing your opponent, but it also draws yourself. But this formation, kind of nice thing. 
I can see this being a uh, good card. It can also be a, a nice card from Glyph at the right spots because uh, it draws very fast. It's only two mana that you draw two cards. If you play this card in a late game, you're the one that gets used out of these cards first. So in a control heavy meta, this is a pretty good card. And the potential of working as mill is very promising. So I'll trade this card three out of five as like an, uh, a quite a good potential card. Alright guys, I really gotta go to the toilet very fast and um, I will be then reviewing on this card. Let me know first what you feel about this card. We gotta, we have like, uh, we are kind of away, so gotta take myself a very uh, quick toilet break. But uh, let me know what you feel on this card because this is a very interesting one. Uh... Next up is the legendary spell for the hunter. Flyer, boom, zuka, boom, boom, bam. <laughs> uh, summon three minions from your deck, they attack enemy minions, then die. So, a very interesting uh, card here that is kind of strange uh, and cool as it cannot hit face, um, but only it can only attack enemy minions. But, very strong card as it, has an, uh, it gives um, three minions. Uh, rush for eight mana that out get out of the deck for free so this is like I'm wondering how to make this card work and there are some good combo cards like think for example about playing this to get your Katrina on the board is very strong any minion that has the death rattle tag on it is very strong to get from this minion so you get like death rattles with uh, with rush and one of the problems with death rattles is that if they don't have rush, it's so, so hard to make work. Um, because they're so slow. But this card kind of summons the death rattles, gain rush directly. And this is a mana cheating card. And we all know how broken mana cheating cards can become. I'm not sure if this card can become as broken. But 8 mana, or for 8 mana, making 3 cards... Uh, that can directly attack and get out of the deck to attack is very strong. Of course, it doesn't work with zero attack, but with other Death Rattle cards, I haven't looked up much about what the current uh, combos are. Like Katrina is, I guess, a decent, but there might even be better ones um, to like that it can attack directly, and then after they die, they summon something else. So it definitely is not a deck where you want to play. You don't want to play this deck with like King Crush and Devil Swords because, well, hey, they cannot hit the enemy. Maybe um, they have all charge, right? Can that actually work? They all three have charge, so can they still hit face? If you play this, you get King Crush and Double Devil Sword. Can it hit face? Oh, they attack enemy minions. Oh, it goes random. Oh my god. Um, no. Yeah, so that's not a thing. They attack... Oh, the random is minions. Oh my god. That's actually worse. That's quite worse. That you cannot choose how to attack. Ooh, that rates... Ah, uh, then I'm not a big fan, maybe. That's a lot, then. 8 mana. Randomly attack, you get night death rattles. Ah, uh, maybe in a death rattle deck. It has potential, but it's hard. 2-5. I'm not so fan of that. Because of 8 mana, it's so expensive, 8 mana. 8 mana, you get like tempo and you gain death rattles and you gain the rush on that, but that's nice. But when they randomly attack and for 8 mana, it's it's kinda hard. I would rate it 2-5. Beckerot Lightning, zero mana spell, wow, zero mana spell, deal one damage to all minions, overload two. So, another zero mana spell here for the Shaman, deal one damage to all minions. Really reminds me on the Maelstrom Portal, kind of, what was an, uh, an, an two mana deal one damage card, but and some of the random one drop, well here we have a deal one deal one damage to all minions uh what is the power of this card is zero mana and zero mana cards always have the potential on becoming broken or being very good maybe this can also be very good with overload cards we have seen the four mana three five but i think is a very good card 
um, and, it, and if you can combine it or even with the with already the earth elemental if you combine it with this it's actually a very nice now it can be a very nice combo swing I at least uh, so suppose that goes the synergy of that goes well that they don't kill your minions instantly but maybe that is not even correct it's a it's a zero mana card so that's always like big potential when there are zero mana cards mana cheating is always a thing so it, it kills the sparks oh really well then it's kind of meh yeah it's probably i mean deal to an damage to all minions it's probably a 1.5 out of 5 it has like a bit potential but i think it's kind of hard for shaman to make it work shaman has so many of these cards that uh can get there but not this one is uh, hard to make work brainstormer battle cry gain plus one health for each spell in your hand kind of like a twilight drake as a uh, working for the extra stat line kind of a solid aura, uh, card there Gain plus one health for each spell in your hand. I don't think this is gonna get... It's very hard to make this card like as good as Twilight Drake. And in big spell, you maybe in like big spell, actually like in big spell mage, it like can do a bit. Or maybe in hunter that plays a little bit of spells. But do you really want to play a tree drop to like make that work? And you don't have that many like full of a hand as often. It's not a very good card. You can so you can make it maybe three mana three five here and there. It's okay. It's okay. It's a solid card, kind of hard to make work, but in some decks it's maybe not as hard to make work. So maybe this is a card from Miracle Rogue. The problem with Miracle Rogue is it's like so stacked on the tree drop currently, and the tuck is so good in that. But um, yeah, it's like a two out of five in my opinion. Get, can maybe get some place somewhere. Ooh, what a huge card here, guys. Nine mana, nine seven, bulldozer, divine shield. Damn, what a big boy. What a big boy, guys. Reminds me on these uh, on the this, the the Hupla Pup tank that we had before. What was like eight mana, eight eight, divine shield or something. This card is, uh, well, obviously it's a 1-5 in, um, in, like, Constructed. But this is maybe a card that can work very well with, like, the Hunter card. Uh, the Hunter Spellstone. If this guy... Oh, no, it actually dies directly. Ah, never mind. It's like the Force thing kind of card. So this card is kind of good for Arena. It's a very good, solid Arena card. In Constructed, I don't know. You, I don't think it can get any play at all. You have to cheat in this card. Maybe in like an... Maybe this can be... Oh, this can actually be a good card for the Warrior Spellstone. That summons 3 max from your deck and then you give them a rush. So that is like a combo to make it work. Like in the Mech Rush Warrior. Or like with Dr. Boom, this card gains rush. And then it is like a thing. Of course, this card is way too expensive for like any Magnetic Synergy. So our Warrior can also discover it. It's probably a card that... It's not gonna get any played itself in the deck, but with like discover mechanics and all that stuff, it gets like a little bit of like uh, going in like an in the meta to get some value. So getting played in a deck, it's probably a one five, but it it will see some play here in discovers and greedy matchups, and there you can I can like maybe see it as like a two five. Colloxial uh, Chemist, 2 mana 1 to Stealth Divine Shield. So, 2 mana 1 2 Divine Shield is already a very okay stat line. It's like a Neutron stat line without Taunt. And for Taunt, you gain Stealth. What well, is kind of okay. It's a, it's a pretty solid 2 drop. 
I'm not sure how you get this uh, Berg. Like, it's like no, it's not a very exciting car, but it's like two mana, one, two divine shield. Problem is, it's like not a mech or any synergy. So, like the the why annoying taunt is such a good card is kind of because of the taunt being so annoying. Hey. But this one kind of isn't, so I'm not sure. I don't think it gets that much play. It has not like anything that I'm like, wow, that's making the card like great. So not very, very convinced on this card. 2.5, 2 out of 5. Graced Chemist. Oh, I like this art, guys. I love this art. In the blue. Four mana, four mana, four four. Give a friendly minion plus four attack. Four mana, four four. Give your give your mi friendly minion cold blood, kinda. What well, is a uh, very cool card to like snowball the game sometimes and get some tempo for a tempo rogue. Pretty, pretty good card. Um, five mana four for give a minion plus four attack can be very good. It kind of reminds me of the Tinkers all in a little bit too. Um, but that's also gave it on the weapon. I think this is a very good card in Odd Rogue, guys. This card you can play in Odd Rogue as a five, like one of the cards to like coin out if you only have like one minion on the board and it's it like deals so much damage. So I think this is a card to like play in Odd Rogue. Like, it's a deck because it's like a rogue card only, you can, but they also maybe a little bit in like some uh, miracle rogues you can play this as a one-off, I don't think you want to play this as a two-off there. But play this in like an odd rogue deck, uh, like the Baku rogue, and you get like some more. It's a pretty solid card. Uh, plus extra attack is very, uh, very good in rogue, um, so that's a way to make it work. I think it's uh, it's like a 3.5 out of 5 card. It's I feel it's like a, it's like a little bit better skill bane if you have a minion on the board. Because it's faster. So, I think it's an uh, a a, be a better skill bane in rogue. Next up, Damaged Stegotron, 6 mana, mech card, 5 mana or 512, battle cry, deal 6 damage, so that it will mean a deal man, a six, a 6 mana, 5, 6. So this is a very hard card to review, because this is obviously not a good card to just play, but this is a very good card if you can like get it out of your deck. And cheat on it or like cube it and resummon it or things like this kind of comes in like as a grizzly or maybe like also having some potential in priest or gets a little play in um, like this can be very good for example like if you play this with the uh, spellstone of the warrior where you can like recruit this it's a pretty solid card to recruit or any card that has like the way of the uh, recruit mechanic on the spell written. And then it's a 6 mana 5, 12. Very, this is a very hard card to review because I'm not sure if there are any very broken things to do this with, um, with, um, with mech card specific. It has like the Sleepy Dragon stat line. Well, this is like a very strong stat line. Yeah, we'll have to rate this like 3 out of 5 or something. It's just a card that I would rate lower. But there is like potential on cheating. And cheating is OP. Um, with mana. Or with like stat lines. So it has like potential with like the boom ship from the warrior for example. Or maybe in like the warrior has some potential. Next up, Ectomancy, 6 mana, summon copy of all demons you control. 6 mana, summon copies of everything you got on the board from the demons. So, uh, this is a card that is so expensive, guys. 6 mana, summon copies of all demons you control. And the thing is, 
when you control a lot of demons you're normally doing good so you don't need a card like summon copies of it and ah this is so expensive guys six mana to summon copies of your bar like to copy your bard it's so expensive for your the cost this is a card that you you never gonna play it's so expensive and nah it's it's like a situational faceless manipulator effect on like more minions um it's 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 not very flexible either so i don't think this gets any play um it's an uh, it's a one out of five card like you can you have some combos where you can use it on four doors but then you normally are already are winning the game so it's only a good card when you are ahead kind of like sudden genesis but sudden genesis like is only it's getting played because of some combos but this card is you are already ahead on that like this and uh, this this doesn't get much play and yeah one five card for me you can clip that guys electro white if you're holding a spell that costs five uh, or more game plus one plus one so very cool card here as it is an uh and um, for a uh, big spell deck or spell decks that uh, are you where a deck that plays a lot of spells is a three mana four four pretty okay problem is like three mana four four is not like completely broken in this world in this meta um it, it gets played maybe you can fit it in like a big spell mage to to play your card it's kind of like the tuck a little bit as um, but doesn't like have growing potential it's probably a very good arena card in that way too um ah, it's not that great in arena actually you don't really want to play this in your true deck i don't think you want to really play it in mage either i just think it's too weak um just getting plus one plus one is not like broken uh, you even need to have the spell in the hand it's like a two out of five uh for me it's not very very strong Next up, elect elementary reaction. Two mana, draw a card, copy it if you played an elemental last turn. Very interesting card actually here, as it uh, draws a card and it copies uh, what you have drawn there too. So kind of a two mana mimic pot, if you played an elemental the turn before. Well, this is actually very powerful. It's kind of like a two mana draw. Two card was actually very good uh, for the shaman. I think this card uh, should get played in all elemental decks and you pro might wanna maybe you can wanna play it with the two mana elemental card but what I really like about this card it's like draw and one of the biggest things that I don't like about the elemental shaman is you always get like random elementals and these are things that are sometimes good but sometimes also very bad but this is a very good one uh, because it draws two cards from your deck and if you play it, if you make it a little bit cheap, but also the potential of getting some good cards twice can be very powerful. So this is a very good draw card. Very good draw card uh, for the Shaman here. Well, definitely, I think this is a uh, 4 out of 5 card. Um, if it doesn't get played, it's just because, well, Shadowbox Shaman is just too OP. And you don't play Elemental Shaman or Elemental Shaman is not powerful enough. But this card is pretty good. Maybe you can even play it in your Even Shaman. Um, as a card together with the other uh, the or, or the the two mana plus two plus two for elemental and make it very elemental based we'll see glowstone technician six mana three four give all minions in your hand plus two plus two uh, Um, so another card or a card for another buff paladin uh, archetype the the problem is guys we have had so many cards for buff paladin in the past most of them actually rotated out and it has never been a thing because it just buffs your hand it's a six mana six mana three four buff the minions in your hand it's a six mana three four buff your minions in your hand it is so weak stat line you overpay the card for three mana to buff hands 
Hey, I don't even want to look at this card too much. Like, I really wish that P Buff Paladin is a deck, guys, but it just isn't. Because there's no broken thing to make it work. It's just mega slow to, like, gain a little bonus on your minions. It just doesn't get there. It's an, um... It's a it's an uh, six mana one hundred dust card here, uh, epic for the paladin, and you hope you don't get this in your pack. Let's move on. And look what we got here: the goblin bomb itself. So we have already seen a lot of cards that uh, summon goblin bombs. There is a, now the card itself too: one mana zero two, death rattle, uh, deal two damage to the enemy hero. So I don't think this card on itself is going to get much play, but I think the Goblin Pop is quite good on, so on some cards that we have seen being revealed already. Uh, it's kind of like a little bit of like a Leper Gnome, but kind of just weaker because it just doesn't attack. It has the Magnetic bonus, so that makes up for it, so it's kind of good as an, uh, an uh, in combination with the Magnetic. I think this on itself might not see as much play, but I think there are quite some good cards that are gonna summon goblin bombs uh, that you will see play. So the card, this card itself is probably not getting there, but this card will definitely see play uh, as the goblin bombs. Actually kinda excited to get a little bit of this uh, deal to damage to the enemy here. I'll get some good old leper gnome mechanics back in the game. So yeah, this card probably itself is a little too weak, but it will definitely see play as a uh, as the, as the card that is going to summon Goblin Bombs and so deal damage uh, to your opponent. Up next for the Hunter, Goblin Prank. Give a friendly minion plus 3 plus 3 and rush. rush. It dies at the end of the turn. And that's a very powerful card in my opinion to be honest because um, this works so well with like an egg or any or with cube or anything to make directly work. And why it is so good is because it also gains rush. Like if it will say plus mana plus three plus three is already insane. But with rush it's even a bit better. It's kind of power overwhelming in a way with rush. What is very good this is a very strong card. This is a very strong card in also the current Death Rattle Hunter decks. Uh, maybe also in Spell Hunter. I'm not sure about that, but maybe. But very good in uh, in any way of Death Rattle Hunter. G play an, uh, play a, a pretty slow card. Give it plus 3 and 3 uh, and rush directly. You gain control back on the board. You probably proc the Death Rattle. So a very, very good card. Um... Yeah, I think this is a very strong card and you will see definitely played in uh, in like Death Rattle based Hunter decks. Maybe it can also work with all the Goblin synergy you have now as even more um, Death Rattle cards have been revealed for the Hunter. And one of the biggest problems is that you don't that you have a lot of zero tag minions maybe on the board. Well, this can help you a little bit as it gives minions plus three, plus three and rush. So I, th I see this card having quite a lot of potential. Uh, I would rate it four out of five. I think that's a good spell card or spell for the hunter. Two mana, cheap card, quite strong bu uh, buff line, and very good in like death rattle synergies. So I'm pretty um, pretty convinced on this card. Holo man, sir, a five mana three three. After your opponent, after your opponent plays a minion, summon a one one copy of it. Wait, what? 5 mana 3-3 three, three after your opponent plays a minion, you summon a 1-1 one, one copy. That doesn't quite hit the mark. 5 mana 3-3 three, three after your opponent plays a minion, summon a 1-1 one, one copy of it. I don't even know what to say to see it being like any good. Yeah, you can play it against combo decks and you get a 1-1, one, one, but then he just trades it away. I mean, you can. your opponent can maybe not play the egg or... Pff. Hey, let's move on. Kaboom bot. 3 mana 2-2. Two, two. Death Rattle deal for damage to an enemy minion. Uh, Kaboom bot. Uh, kinda, kinda interesting as it is kinda like the, it's kinda in the way of the 2 mana... 
elemental for the elemental decks that also deals damage then to a random enemy minion. I think it has a little bit of potential to Kaboom bot, but it's a little bit expensive, but maybe it can also work a little bit well to gain board presence back for mech decks. I'm not very sure. Don't really think this has like magnetic kind of wants to slowball the board, and this card kind of doesn't do that. So I will rate it two out of five. It's not a very spectacular mech, but it's okay. Loose specimen, five mana six six beast, deal six damage randomly split along other friendly minions. So that's kind of an interesting card, as it has a very strong stat line. 5 mana 6-6, six, six. but you deal 6 damage randomly along other uh, friendly minions, but of course if you don't have other minions on the board, you don't deal damage to your other minions. We smart guys. Um, another very strong thing about this card is um, it can maybe work a little bit well with death rattles. It can also work well with, I don't know, cards that kind of want to get damage. Let's say Echolite of Pain, let's say Goonspire Turret. Uh, or anything like that. So I can see quite some potential maybe in Warrior towards that um, to make it work. Guys, so many buff cards for my Tower Warrior, man. I cannot. My Tower Warrior is gonna be a thing. I wish the Tower was a mech, actually. That the Tower was a mech. That would make the Tower Warrior even better. I was like, man, can't uh, the Tower not be a mech? Um, but. It's maybe a little hard to make work, but this card's pretty good. It's kind of a power creep, but makes the card very, very promising. It's a, it's a card with potential, as it just has the power creep potential. And there are a lot of ways that it, the other, that it doesn't really matter. It's also B, so maybe there is some uh, possible uh, to make that work. But rate it three out of five. One mana, one mon, Mekiro. Death Rattle, Summoner 1-1, one, one, uh, Yo and Bot. Uh, the Yo Bot also being a mech, but uh, if uh, it makes sense. One mana, one on Death Rattle, Summoner 1-1, one, one. that's very strong, guys. It's like a possessed villager as a neutral mech, are you kidding me? That card is, oh, that, this card is very strong. This is a uh, neutral possessed villager, guys, for Max. If we are like a neutral, already a neutral possessed villager, what well, is already very strong, but also double the mech, uh, double the mech part of it. Yeah, this card is. I think this card is almost 5 5. This is a very strong card. One mana neutral. Possessed Villager, we'll trade it. This is just a top 10 card of the expansion, in my opinion. It's a very strong card. One mana Possessed Villager. Uh, summon another 1-1 one, one and having the mech tar Like, if there are mech, de mech decks are gonna get burned, guys, it, like, this is definitely a card that you're gonna see play. Maybe it's 4 power, 4 up. 4.5 out of 5, but it's for close to being one of the best. Um, it's uh, together with like the Pelding card, probably the best mech early game revealed. But that uh, this is a neutral card, so it gets can like get played in so many cards. It's an uh, it's gonna be one of the cards like if the mech. Decks are gonna get Berg. This card will definitely get played. It's an, uh, a very strong card. It's gonna be a card that you will see in all, every mech deck. And might help the more... Or like the aggro mech decks. And I can see it having an, a very huge potential. It's so cheap. Uh, it's one, one mana possessed villager as a neutral card, guys. It's very strong. It can also just get played in Zoo or like anything like that. Any deck that is like missing a little bit on um, on the one drops, but aggro has to be a thing then. Like at the moment, aggro is not very strong, so we'll see how much the mech decks can do to make that work. 
Mikotech controller, 3 mana, 2 1, summon 2 1 1 microbots. 2 1 mana, uh, 2 1 1 microbots, I suppose, are just 2 1 1 mechs. Um, 3 mana, 2 is Dr. 3. Dr. Tree, but not very spectacular. Uh, it's not a mech itself, but kind of hurts the card a little bit. I'm not a big fan of this card because it's just not doing enough. It's a very hard card to make work. Um, and yeah, you get a little bit of value here, but it's kind of a little on the weak side of the value. It's not insane value. If this card will be a mech itself, it will be maybe kind of nice. I just feel this card is a little too weak. It's a token card. Maybe this can be played in like a token druid or something like that. Or maybe in a token base deck that buffs every card on the board then afterwards. This will be cool in like an evolved shaman. But yeah, sadly evolved shaman not being there anymore. Um, maybe in like some token deck that can evolve. Like maybe in an evolved shaman -y deck it's still like getting some play here and there. But... Yeah, two out of five. And next up, the piloted Reaper. Bo Bo uh, still knows the piloted shed Shredder, guys. Four mana four three. Summon a mi random minion from your hand that goes two or less. So kind of a, a comeback of the piloted Shredder for everybody that was missing him. Summon a random minion that uh, from your hand that costs two or less. I mean, obviously you kind of want to cheat on this, where you get like very strong, st uh, very strong stat lines um, of the two drop. So you want to play two drops that are very having a strong stat line that you normally have to pay for, let's say Millhouse or anything like that. Um, pretty strong card. Pretty strong card. It uh, the death rattle makes it a little slow. Uh, that it is like a random minion from your hand can be a little bit of a problem as maybe you have like a weaker card in your hand too that you cannot make work. But um, it has like a potential in the way that uh, it's a, like a little bit of a tempo swingy card and that can make it very strong. You have to play like strong stat lines so you want to maybe... Like the problem is there are not very insane stat, two drop stat lines at the moment, right? Like you have the beetle but... What well, is kind of almost the strongest one at the moment. That's kind of a little bit of a problem. But uh, this card is definitely... It can get potential. The mechanic is quite strong. The card cheapness is kind of strong. So it should have potential. And maybe it works a little bit in a mech deck too. Where you summon strong stat lines on that. Yeah, 2-5, 3-5 out of 5. 3 out of 5. Rocket Boots. Give a minion rush, draw a card. Kind of in the slam category of giving a bonus, draw a card. Drawing cards in Warrior is very strong. But giving rush, I don't think it makes up for that. I don't think you want to pay like one mana to give a minion rush. Because I see... I see the... I see drawing a card kind of worth one mana maybe in in Boria, but giving a minion rush it doesn't. So I don't think uh, with this uh, card you're gonna get so much play at all in Boria. I think it's a pretty weak card um, to make any work in Boria. Well, rated like 1.5 out of 5. Rusty Recycler, 5 mana 2 6, Taunt Lifesteal. Another mech here. Uh, Alright mech. 5 mana. Well, but very mesh stat line. It has like a lifesteal tag. Well, it's kind of interesting. If you can like magnetic it maybe. But just taunt and lifesteal might just be a little bit too, too weak. It looks very like the shielded minibot. Uh, I think it's kind of hard to make like a taunt lifesteal card work uh, that doesn't have bonus effects and the stat line is a little bit too weak. There are some nice uh, magnetic ways that it works and the great thing about this is like if you make magnetic work with lifesteal it can be very insane. So that is like the potential. I like the art a lot on this card. Uh, I've already 2-5 but it, 
It has like a lot of potential maybe with this lifesteal thing in like aggro metas. Spark drill, six mana, five one, death rattle at two, one one sparks with rush to your hand. Ah, six mana, five one. <laughs> I mean, it's it's six mana, five one is not as bad when it has rush because you have six mana, five attack rush. But ah, that's a poor. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Like, you have a lot of rush in this card, but that's a very, very weak stat line, guys. This is a 1 out of 5 card, right? This is like... A... Cannot make this card work, man. Magma Ratio with rush with like a little bonus, but come on. That, is, that man doesn't make up for the bonus, guys. I, I almost want to rate it 0 out of 5. Sorry, Blizzard. <laughs> spark and G! 2 mana, 2 1. Better cry, add a 1 1 spark with rush to a hand. So, this is like a little bit like more cheaper than the card before. So, um, 2 mana, 2 1 without adding a 1 1. It's okay, it's a max. So, that's like maybe good with other cheap max to make work and you gain a little bit of a value. It's a little on the weak stat line, maybe. Um, but sparks can be nice, maybe, towards to add to your hand. Especially because sparks have additional synergy if you are, like, combining with flame totem or any other um, way of of synergy on that. It can be good with uh, the mech that makes it cheaper to get, like, a little bit of a tempo swing going. But it's kind of... Mm, it's kind of meh, because mechs need strong stat line, because then you make the mech and the magnetic mechanic really work, so... Yeah, I cannot rate it much higher than 1.5 out of 5. Spring Rocket! Battle Cry, deal 2 damage, 3 mana, 2, 1, mech. So kind of is like comparable to the Disciple of Cthulhu, but it's kind of, what was kind of a nice card in like Cthulhu decks. Um, so I can see it being like a thing there. Uh, maybe that is something that mech decks kind of want. To sometimes just play a minion that deals with your opponent minions. Uh, so we shall not underestimate the power of battle cry deal to damage to like anything you can choose. Maybe that's like a thing that you want to do in uh, in the war or in like mech decks a bit. It's like an uh, a, a phoenix in that way too, but just for mech decks a bit better. It has a little potential here. Uh, two out of five. Are we only are we only getting neutrals left, guys? Oh, weird. There, yeah, okay. Um, four mana, five. I'm still right, sure. Nah. Stop with this five one stat line, guys. It's not. I mean, this this can be a good for rushing. These magma ragers, man. 5 1 mech. Uh, 9. <laughs> it's not as bad as some others, but. It's okay. It's okay. It has maybe potential. Maybe if you can eat it, but. It's like a good suicide card into like a very strong minion to be like, BAM! But. Uh, Tosti Turpy, zero mana card, swap a minion's attack and health. I think this is actually a very strong card, guys, for the priest. Zero mana, swap a minion's attack and health. So we have seen how good combo priest decks can become. And now you can just for zero mana, swap attack and health of a minion. Very strong card. It is. Uh, it has the potential of like uh, making it a little bit cheaper for like the inner fight. It's like a graced alchemist for zero mana. So the, what is the great thing about this card is if your opponent plays guys and you at least play one topsy turpy, you just have like always potential to make your combo deck work. So I think this is a very good card for a combo priest. It uh, it's like a tech card to not get completely ruined by guys. The Geist counter is real, guys. So, yeah, I kind of like this card. Uh, it's a good card for Priest. 
it will not be like getting a lot of play because it's kind of situational and but it's gonna be like a one-off card in a lot of the combo priest decks and so it has like quite some potential on that maybe there's also other potential where like swapping is even beneficial but can also play it as a tempo swing on swapping your opponent's minions so it's a pretty good card it's an uh, and because of zero mana even better it's a uh, it's a 4.4 out of 5 card Toxicologist, 2 mana 2-2, two, two. better cry, give your weapons plus 1 attack, or give your weapon plus 1 attack. So a 2 mana 2 is already a solid stat line, I don't think this card is getting in much play in a lot of decks, but this is actually a very good card in uh, Kingspain Rogue, right? Because it gives your weapon plus 1 attack, it just does the same thing as the pirate, but just for 1 mana cheaper, and it doesn't need the, uh, it doesn't need the combo effect. So it is just like an, a card that is just an insta inclusion in uh, Kingsbane Rogue. So yeah, deck card is maybe a bit okay in some other decks too. But mainly in, uh, in Kingsbane Rogue. Maybe in like some even Rogue. Nah, 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 that's not a thing. It, this card is just gonna be insta played in uh, Kingsbane Rogue. So normally this card I cannot rate too high, but because of the this just being an insta inclusion in Kingsbane Rogue, uh, what will take it will just take over the spot of the pirate because it's just the same, but just one mana cheaper and no combo effect. So it definitely gets like the insta spot there. Pretty, pretty. It's gonna get like it's like auto inclusion there. It's a pretty. And maybe a little bit of other, uh, maybe it can get some plays on other weapon decks, but don't think it hits the mark there. Next up, very interesting card. 2 mana, 2 for mech. Unpowered Mauler. Can only attack if you cast a spell this turn. So, very interesting card. Is it... It can be very good with like magnetic mechanic to gain like additional stat line. The problem is a little bit that you need to play like spells uh, on this card to to like make the attack work. Well, it's like kind of an issue. So this is maybe an interesting card to like get on the board randomly, but and maybe you can make some cool ways to make it work if you can. Um, you can make sure like it. It can attack. I don't see the m insane combos yet with this deck. Uh, because you kind of need to silence it, I feel. But if you can give it some additional buffs, give it taunt. Uh, maybe it can be a thing, but uh, I don't really feel it yet. I don't see it. It's kind of dust to me. Next up, Phenomizer. 2 mana 2 2, two, two Magnetic Poisonous mech. So... 2 mana 2-2 two, two mech for the hunter and very interesting as it gets poisonous. The stat line of this card is already okay and it is like the, it has kind of the gastropod effect of 2 mana 2-2 two, two gastropod uh, with a mech and magnetic. So I'm a little worried because it's a hunter card and I don't see how this works well there. But if there is like any synergy with Max in Hunter, it's definitely good. It can also work very well with all the b the bots in the Hunter deck that you might want to summon, as it can magnetic these bots away. Uh, it still has poisonous, so it's definitely a little bit of a power creepy there uh, to make like a two attack minion with poisonous. Like this is very good if you put it on a bomb. So I can definitely see this card getting quite some play in some mid rangey hunter deck i really wonder how that will be i can I, I see quite some good ways to synergize some mid rangey hunter decks well and this is one of the cheaper mech cards that has very um, strong effect so it works very well with strong stat lines as the two mana one five or just the bots um very cool card i will rate it uh, four out of five i can see this card very very strong Violet Haze, 3 mana card, add 2 random death rattle cards to your hand for the rogue, making teeth rogue a pain. 2 mana, add 2 cards, so this, the 3 mana draw 2 cards is kind of a thing here. 
the, the hard thing is like it adds two random death rattle cards so it's kind of random it's kind of a thing for like a death rattle rogue i guess not really a teeth rogue more like a death rattle rogue uh, this doesn't get played it's too weak um cannot get much play it's uh it's too it just doesn't hit the the thing there it's it's too wide a range a lot of death rattle cards are like over they are over costed you can just play the death rattles guys you don't have to play a random card to get death rattles if you can play death rattles so that's a problem that i have with this random thing um it's not gonna get much played it's gonna be an all right pick maybe here and there in arena but besides that doesn't get played and next up the last one is the two mana two one of widely lighter Better cry summon a zero two a goblin bot that's actually a pretty solid stat line for the card is it's a two mana two three in a way of it getting the goblin bot that synergizes quite well so it's like an a way of where you can play the goblin bot for one mana you can play this for one more mana to get a two one but can be okay Mm, kind of hard to make work, but there are like Zui archetypes where maybe this can get a little bit justified or can be uh, a bit better if you can buff uh, buff it. It's kind of hard to make work. I don't rate this card very high. I would rate it 2 out of 5 for a year. So, yeah, not very, very, very strong in my opinion, but maybe okay. And then there are all the cards, guys. We now revealed all the cards.